you're looking at the brand new Asus UX32 VD. Uh, this one in particular is the DB71. There's going to be a few different variations on the UX32 VD, depending on what options they have, but they're all going to pretty much have the same thing, maybe a different hard drive. I don't know. What else could it have, Wendell? I don't know. Um, it, it's kind of sketchy right now. That the There's uh, six different models, the three of the UX32 VD and three of the updated UX31A. Right. But it doesn't look like... You've got a whole lot of options on the UX32 VD beyond, you know, i5, i7 type right. options. But we have some options, and we're going to share them with you. In this video, I'm going to give you a rundown um, of the specs. We're going to do a review, some benchmarks, some gaming benchmarks, because it does have a dedicated graphics card. And um, then we're going to talk about why it's better than the UX31A, which everyone seems to love the UX31A. This one can really run circles around it with the dedicated graphics and a few modifications that we did. I'm also, we're going to tear this thing apart. So you're going to get to see the insides. We're going to pull out the hard drive, and we're going to modify one of our SSD drives so that it will fit in here. And we're going to show you how fast that is. So, yeah, it'll run circles around the UX31A in that configuration. And the MacBook Air. Yeah, it, it will destroy a MacBook Air. Now. <laughs> Let's run down the specs um, before we really get into anything else. As you can see, very sleek, very elegant. Backlit keys, brushed aluminum everywhere, improved touchpad. Uh, some people were complaining that there was, like, bend when you're typing or what was that what are they complaining about Wendell I, we haven't I haven't really noticed it you said you haven't noticed it but um if you uh, I saw a lot of the comments that if you press down on the keyboard um a lot that it would it would flex and we've we've got some of the older the old uh, I think it was UX 31 last year's model mm -hmm. and because uh, it was it was more unibody I guess than this one this one you can take apart it would flex uh or this model supposedly has more flex than the other one but honestly I haven't noticed it Right. And, you know, I and have, we I have use, giant manly hands. And, and we use man, we use uh, mechanical keyboards all day. Right? Yeah. I mean, Model M's and stuff. So we're always used to, like, clicky, 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 and no big deal. And touchpad's nice and large. The screen, 13.3 inches, full HD, 1920 by 1080. So they've crammed a lot of pixels into a small space here, and that's very, very nice. And uh, we wanted to try some video games on this thing, so we did. I'll get to those in just a second. Uh, there's 4 gigabytes of DDR3, and that runs at 1600 megahertz. Uh, right now, we're still running that 4 gigabytes. We're waiting on our Corsair memory to come in. Uh, there's some, some Corsair memory, the Corsair Vengeance. It's 1600 megahertz, and it will work in this thing. So if you put the 8 gigs of memory in there, uh, it doesn't run a dual channel anymore. It runs a single channel, but you have 10 gigs of RAM, and that's going to be really awesome. Yeah, this is the this is the, the really attractive thing about this ZenBook is that it has you know, a normal SATA connector for your hard drive and one normal SODIMM slot. Right. The, the other memory, because it is very thin, the other memory is directly on the PCB, so it is like, it's part of the motherboard. Uh, also, the CPU on this one is part of the motherboard. It's There's no socket because they want to keep it nice and thin. So everything is pretty much part of the motherboard. The graphics card, everything. This has the uh, GeForce 620M's dedicated graphics card with one gigabyte of dedicated video memory. That's GDDR5. And uh, that really, really helps. The dimensions on this, 12.8 um, across and 8.79 inches from front to back and 0.72 inches thick. So it's nice and slim. Not quite as slim as the UX31A, but th this kind of power, I'm willing to, to deal with a little bit more than half an inch. Uh, the weight on this is 3.2 pounds or 1.45 kilograms. Of course, we've got... Um, USB 3, we've got three of those. We've got a memory card slot that'll do SD, SDHC and uh, multimedia cards. We've got a, a jack for audio that does headphones and microphone in one jack. And it comes with a dongle for uh, mini VGA to full-size VGA. And we also have a dongle uh, that's USB to Ethernet because there's not enough room to put a full-size Ethernet port on board. The audio in here, it's Bang & Olufsen. They make some of the best audio in the world. It is small. It does sound like a laptop, but it sounds like a really good laptop, and it sounds better than just about any other 13.3-inch laptop that I've heard, so I'm not going to complain there. Uh, the vent is right here. I have a single hinge. closes nice and smoothly. And uh, we have the spiral brushed aluminum on the back. It's a very sleek unit. And I want to place this in a category right now. A lot of people in business are going to be using this, uh, but you can also get away with buying one of these for productivity. If you want to do Adobe Premiere on the go, as long as you're not doing tons of animation, uh, you know, in After Effects or something like that, it will work just fine. After Effects would work just fine in this. Uh, if you want to play Skyrim on Ultra, go ahead. Just turn the filters off. It'll run just fine. If you want to play Diablo, if you want to play Battlefield 3, go right ahead. You can do that. So this could be a gaming laptop, and it's priced right. If you put an SSD in this thing, like we're about to show you how to do, 
it'll just destroy everything. The weakest part of this is the hard drive. It's a 5400 RPM hard drive. This one came with a, with a uh, Hitachi. Uh, to offset that, there is 32 gigabytes of onboard memory, 24 of which is used as sort of a paging file. And that does speed things up. Um, speed things up quite a bit but not as much as a dedicated ssd drive and that's what we did we went ahead and put in an occ vertex uh, 3 max iops and that just made it fly so if you put your own ssd in here upgrade the ram it's going to blow the uh, ux31a out of the water because it has dedicated video it's going to be the best this generation and that's why we have that one instead of the ux31a so let's talk about gaming uh, because i did mention that this is something for gamers it may look a little too sleek for gamers but we're sophisticated are we not are we not sophisticated we are. We got to go to business meetings, and you don't want to carry a gaming laptop to business meetings, but carrying this over to a LAN party? Why not? All right, so let's talk about the video games. Start off with Skyrim. Now, Skyrim, we ran Skyrim at 1920 by 1080. Uh, settings uh, were ultra. We didn't turn any of the filters on. We had the filters on, and it was getting like 15 frames a second, but after we turned the filters off, it ran at 28.87 frames per second, and that was in a frantic firefight with a dragon and a bunch of people running around. We were playing the opening scenario, so there was lots of stuff lots of stuff going on in the screen once we went inside we benchmarked it again because you know inside it's a little bit different and inside we got 39.33 frames per second that's pretty impressive uh starcraft 2 a lot of you guys are going to be using this to play uh, rts games so why not starcraft 2 1920 by 1080 on max settings uh 55.4 frames per second in starcraft 2 diablo 3 it's a demanding game 1920 by 1080 maxed out all the settings 29.933 frames per second uh, it was totally playable fps games i usually prefer them to be above 30 fps um i, I really don't have anything to complain about though and and, and if you guys do uh, want to get you know a few more fps you can just turn it down from ultra just a little bit and it'll be just fine it really did a really good job. Lastly, we did an OpenGL test. Uh, it came in just below the 4870 at 26.67 frames per second. All right, let's, uh, let's let's tear it apart, shall we? In order to take the back off, you're going to need a Torx screwdriver. That's T-O-R-X. Uh, so grab one of those. You need a small one. Uh, some of the screws on the back are at an angle, so just you know make sure that you hold the screwdriver at an angle. Or else it'll damage the screw. Just remove them all. There's several around the back. Should be pretty easy. If you see a screw, take it out. Uh, next. You're going to notice that the back is sticky. There, uh, there's some tape on the back. Just lift it off gently, and then you can remove the tape after uh, you have the back off. No big deal. There's the there's the uh, SO dim. You can pull that out. If you need to install a larger one, you just put it in there. It's just like any other laptop. Very simple and easy. Look around under the hood. Now, in order to un remove the hard drive, just unscrew. There's four screws. Two of them you can get to easily. Uh, the other two, they're under the battery in the back. So we'll need to unscrew several screws all around the battery uh, it's pretty easy just go around any of these screws here you can you can see them uh, some of you may need to get tweezers out grab it with tweezers yes got it then just pull the battery up um, also one of the ribbon cables uh, that ribbon cable there is uh, attached to the bottom of the battery so be careful when you're pulling it out you don't need to pull the battery out you can just remove those two screws there uh, now we're gonna take our hard drive apart there's four screws there on our OCZ remove that there's the PCB. Four more screws. Remove all four of those, and then you can take out the PCB uh, from the housing. And uh, there we have our OCZ SSD. You can do this with, with any other SSD. We're cutting some thick double-sided tape. All right, just go ahead and cut a few pieces of that. And we're going to place that right on some of the uh, memory chips. Now what we're doing here is we're going to put this back into the case, but uh, we need to have this there so it gives it a little bit of lift. And we're sticking it into the top of the case. There it is upside down. If your SSD is smaller than seven millimeters, you don't have to do this. All right, screw in the bracket that came off of the original hard drive. Just do this on both sides, very easy. And uh, then it will fit right in there where your old one was. So there's our SSD. Again, we had to remove the bottom because ours was nine millimeters. Most SSDs are seven to nine millimeters, but if it's seven, you can get by without it. Put the screws back in on both sides. And on the other side, so you got all four screws, just like when you first put it in. Very simple. And then go ahead, after you've screwed all those down, nice and tight, go ahead and screw your battery back in. There's several screws all the way around. And again, use tweezers so you don't lose your uh, screws, so they don't fall you know, anywhere into the system and get lost. So go ahead and screw all those down nice and tightly. There we go. All the way around. Excellent. 
And we're going to put the back back on. All right, when you're putting the back of the case on, just lay it on gently. No need to slam it down or anything like that. Make sure it's in the right spot. And then we're going to go with the screws and do uh, sort of opposite ends. So don't tighten it down all the way. There you go. Go from one side to the other. Uh, that way we're not putting too much pressure on any one side of the, of the uh, case at one time. So just keep going back and forth, adding your screws, not too tight. You want to make sure that uh, they still have a couple turns left because after we've got all the screws in there, all the way around, we're going to go back and snug them all up. That way it'll go on evenly and perfectly and there won't be any rough edges or anything like that. You want it to be just like it was from the factory. So screw them all down. And now we're just going to go around and just snug them up. A couple, a couple turns on each one should do the trick. And we're almost finished. And there you have it. Now we're going to install windows if you want to. All right, a few things to say in closing. I want to mention that the i7 in this is a dual core, not a quad core. A lot of people think that just because it's an i7, that means it's a quad core. No, i7s are hyper threaded, i5s are not hyper threaded. So you have two cores, four processes going on right here. So that's how that works. And the, the model number on that's the 37, I mean the 3517M. And uh, what else? Uh, what, would we what, what, what would we change about this? What would you change about this, Wendell? Um, I was a little disappointed in micro VGA versus. Um I, it really, I would really have rather had a, some sort of display port. Yeah. Um, but I think the reason they did that, I mean, it's a business class feature. There's a ton of projectors and conference rooms and stuff that still use VGA. So. Yeah, um, that's going to be to most people's benefit. Most people are going to find that the display port is not for them. Yeah. So yeah, it, I, I've never seen a projector with a display port. They yeah. all have VGA. Yeah. So that's going to be a benefit for most people. Oh yeah, thun, uh, Thunderbolt would be nice. I mean, it is all Intel under the hood, so Thunderbolt would be nice, guys. Thunderbolt monitors, Thunderbolt graphics cards, external. That would be nice. <sighs> Next time. All in all, this is the best ZenBook this generation, hands down. You agree? Especially with the upgrades. I mean, if you do the upgrades, it's, it's pretty much untouchable. Yeah. So grab one of these, follow our advice, put the SSD in there, upgrade your RAM, and then uh, hold your head high and walk proud down the street because it's get... not an apple product <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was that was that was that the what you were implying no no just it's nice <laughs> you can you can play games on it uh if you guys have any questions feel free to email me inbox at techsyndicate.com questions about anything we do a little segment called inbox and uh you know maybe your question will show up on inbox never know and for all the new people who have never seen me before who came here because they're looking for this well hi See you guys next time. Aren't you? You're wily. We do have a... Hi. <laughs> 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 Buddy laptop. Take seven. This does have a dedicated... <laughs> Take eight. <laughs> dedicated. <laughs> dedicated. It's got a dedicated uh, graphics card, which means that if you use it for a long time, a crater is going to develop right in the middle of your um, the keypad. Actually, that was the, the thing about this that I really liked is that we actually did game for a while, and it really didn't get that warm. No, it didn't. No caldera f formed. Said <laughs> 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 that right when you were drinking water. Uh, this does have a dedicated graphics card I can't do it <laughs>